Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Relations. The best channel for Reddit cheating stories be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. Don't bottle it up. I did. It doesn't work. For the first four years of our marriage, my wife, 27 female, cheated on me, 28 male. I am aware of four persons, probably a lot more. The first thing that comes to me is that I have low self-esteem. At the time, that was very likely correct. It was taken away from me. The first dagger I felt in my heart was when I discovered she had cheated on me nine months before our first child was born. Should you get a DNA test? I can't since I'm an identical twin with the same DNA. Yes, the first infidelity I am aware of was with my twin. He informed me. I inquired and she said, no, I've never asked. Again, when I found out, my kid was three years old. I informed my wife that we needed to take a break so that I could comprehend this. I was heartbroken. I still loved her and refused to accept the facts. I kept it pent up. During the first week of our vacation, a buddy informed me that she was up with someone from her workplace. I was so upset that I puked and couldn't eat for many days. I decided to try fury instead of melancholy, so I went up to her place of employment to confront them after she informed me it was a lie and hung upon me. I thought it was going to get to beat his when I got there. Her automobile was present, but he was not. She was a bad parent and a nasty person at the time, but I still loved her, and all I wanted was for the anguish to cease. So I told her to come home and I'd forget everything. I was desperate for the anguish to cease. I promised God that I would be his best man on earth and that I would study the Bible every day. We were able to figure things out in the end. She returned as soon as I stopped caring. We relocated to Utah because I was promoted. I could see she was unhappy there. Every day during my lunch break, I tried to stimulate and excite her about our new city, but it didn't work. I was kissing her behind, and I hated myself for it. She got us wrong, not me. We ended up returning home, I allow. We're to return two weeks early while I packed up the home. My soul sensed something was awry when she went home. I contacted my mother and told her, I don't want her to remain at your place. I'm finished. Okay, she said. I was expecting her to answer, certainly not. She asked my grandchild. A remark astounded me. I met up with a co-worker when we were apart. When she found out I was separated, she brought me lunch every day. I attempted to inform my wife. She was very opposed to hearing it. I then returned home. I observed the lady drank every day. That night, I slept at my aunt's home with my mother, and around 2 a.m., my wife began blowing up my phone. She inquired whether we could speak. Nah, I thought. After going to a club, her companion dropped her off at my aunt's driveway. My mother awoke after hearing part of the conversation and said, Tell her, I'll take her mother. No, I answered, I'll take her there. My mother is furious. I was very perplexed. My mother shouts steals. With off. Inquire as to what she did. What happened? I asked. I caught her with Derek, my younger brother, on the sofa. My mother said. My mother called her a name and ordered her not to speak to me unless it was for my daughter and not to attempt to contact me again. My wife reneged on the agreement. Because she was inebriated, I drove her home and confronted her. We didn't have, I was simply resting next to him, she said. I didn't want to be injured again, experience the agony, or have my kid feel anything. My wife was shouting on the road that she didn't want to live any longer. I brought her inside her mother's home and waited for her to fall asleep so she wouldn't do something dumb. I sobbed when I realized she was asleep. My heart was broken once again. I elected to remain in order to alleviate the discomfort. I remained because I was afraid she would do further harm to me. I remained because I cared for her. I remained with her for the sake of our family. My baby will not. Know this anguish if I remain and accept the knocks. I bottled it all up. It devastated me, and I know my wife saw me broken. I, too, did not want to hear the truth. My wife returned to her hometown the next year to see her biological father's home. A month after that little vacation, I get an FB video call from her ex-girlfriend. My wife, she said, had broken up her family. She said she discovered a V-mail on her boyfriend's phone that stated, My tire is flat. My wife drove my vehicle, and my tire pressure indicator was always on. This made sense to me. She also provided pictures of my wife undressed. The same ones were sent to me by my wife. I'm not shocked anymore, I remarked to my wife. When I mentioned that my wife claimed it wrecked her, she quickly transformed. Overnight. She went to therapy, and all I could think was, 
I'm out of here as soon as my daughter is 18. Since then, four years ago, I've always claimed that I'll deal with this suffering when I'm ready. But she has also improved since then. She is a better mom than I am. She cooks, she cleans, and she really revolves her life around me. Worst of all, she has secluded herself. She is quite self-conscious. She believes I will cheat on her or leave her. She wants me to lower my guard, and I know we're meant to forgive, so I behave as if I have. I can't make her pay for errors made 4-10 years ago. I can tell her history interferes with her ability to live. As slash and I am beautiful, humorous and make everyone feel at ease, and I am certain that I am a terrific man. I don't want you to think I'm joking. I work and have previously worked many jobs to support our lifestyle. I'm quite good at hiding my emotions. I can feign happiness, and others see me as constantly upbeat and positive. Anyone who knows how much I struggle with this would be taken aback. The issue is that I either trust her or I don't care anymore. I'm not sure what the distinction is. I don't look at her phone. Nonetheless, I remain in rage. It's still painful. I know it's because I kept silent. It's been four years. Why the hell can't I simply let it go? Not all of the time, but there is often a quiet conflict going on in my thoughts. I despise myself for remaining. I despise myself for being silent. It has grown much better since then. But it is still present. It's really unjust of me to hold this against her since I decided to remain. I know I need to see a professional. But that will be difficult since I will have to conceal it, which will increase her concern. If I tell her, she'll realize it's all about her. I recently had an Adderall addiction, which she has thrown in my face a few times before bringing up her trash. She abruptly came to a stop in the conversation. Do I simply go without telling her why, letting her guess? This way, she won't have to relive her heinous crimes, forcing her to spiral into a profound melancholy. Is it okay if I attempt to speak to her about it? It's been four years. It will eventually expire. It isn't fair to bring it up since I remained. It's also unjust to me since I've had to live with falsehoods and no explanations. Also, why is it necessary to understand the specifics of cheating? Do you want to discover whether your wife has any preferences for acts? Did she get away? Did they make use of a condom? Did they kiss, for example? These particulars seem to be rather exact. Would understanding them not further complicate matters for you? A number of indicators indicate that spouses want specifics. Why? Do specifics aid in healing? I suppose I'm curious what a stranger thinks. Will the agony ever go away, with or without my marriage? Story 2. She cheated the whole two years, finally grabbed my balls, and blocked her. I've known this girl since middle school, and I'm 32 years old. The first incidents occurred when we were initially, officially, in a relationship. We had a brief quarrel at a restaurant, and she got up and walked back to my home before the meal arrived. I sat there calmly, since it was a good establishment, and paid, took the food to go, and strolled back to my house. I probably wasn't polite to her, and called her names for humiliating both of us at that location, and sprayed some beer on her, and she departed for the night since some of our common friends were having a wedding reception party at the same restaurant. So she goes out that night, doesn't answer the phone, and then phones me at 2.45 to 5 a.m., and I'm irritated. She was with my childhood buddy and her husband, which made me feel better. She says that my buddy stole her phone and refused to allow her contact me because she was weeping and heartbroken and so on. She shows up to my house the next day after phoning me all night claiming she was coming over but never showed up. As soon as she drives up, I see a Snapchat notification and tell her to view it right away. It's this guy who was out with them, and he sends a photo of himself resting in his bed with the comment, This is my hangover face, please take care of me. I looked her in the eyes and asked her if she had cheated on me, and she replied no. I also asked her if he had remained at my friend's place, and she said no. My lifelong buddy and her husband both said that it was just them at their home, and that he was not there. Her justification was that he was joined to Snapchat automatically due to shared connections. I'm not buying it for a second. She also claimed that my longtime buddy, female, was attempting to get her to up with other males and forget about her. That is just the beginning. I looked through her phone after two years of on and off nonsense, and it was continuous drama and constantly talking to other people and exes contacting her and she wondered why I would get furious. When she pulled these small phony breakups, she had no difficulty banning me on everything. Oh, she did me up, get drunk, and the man from the first incident while we were truly separated for two months. I'm writing this because I had a bizarre dream about it last night, 
and that it was only from the first month El Mao I could write a book about what I was in the previous two years. And sure, she has other men during these phony breakups. Now that I'm recuperating, I've had her blocked on everything for two weeks. Only her phone number isn't blocked, and I don't have it stored, but I can't wait for the day she comes blowing up my phone number again, just so I can sit back and chuckle at her pitiful efforts to get me back, since this time the door is staying shut.